Need a Wi-Fi scanner and survey tool that won't kill your budget? Try Wi-Fi scanner for Windows. It's an all-in-one tool to explore Wi-Fi access points, test speed, and perform active and passive surveys. Built by Wi-Fi engineers for Wi-Fi engineers. Visit wifiscanner.com to start your free trial today. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Clear to Send podcast. This is Francois. I uh, hope you guys are doing well. I'm here today with Roel. Hey, Roel, how are you? Hey, Francois, how are you doing? Very good. Uh, and today we're starting a new series. Um, so right, we we just finished our Back to Basics series. And now we wanted to start a, a series to talk about the the Wi-Fi hardware and devices. So focus a little mm-hmm. bit about, you know, on, on the div- different tools and, and I guess devices that we use to uh, make our Wi-Fi work in the enterprise space. Uh, and today the episode will focus on the access point, the Wi-Fi access point. So we'll talk a little bit about, you know, the different form factors that uh, we have uh, for the access points in the enterprise space. We'll talk about some of the key features. We'll talk about what the access point does in the network, what's the focus of the access point is, uh, to kind of give you an overview of the different options we have available today. Yeah, and it's kind of hard to pick access points, right? Because if you've got a large installation, you're going to want to pick the right one, especially if you're going with a new vendor. And maybe you have a specific scenario and it's kind of difficult to pick. Should you go with uh, this type of AP or should you go with one with external antennas? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, choosing uh, the right AP for the job is actually, you know, it's usually part of the design phase. Um, and every vendor will have different type of APs. Um, so that's kind of like what we want to cover here. So I guess you, it, it could help you potentially to uh, choose the right AP for what you're trying to do. Um, now, you know, most of the access points, most of the Wi-Fi access points that we uh, we use or that are sold are, you know, just uh, access points with integrated antennas. So just like a box, so usually a white box that we usually install under the ceiling. Uh, and these are like the, the most common uh, AP look, I guess, a form factor. Um, and we could show you, Roel, I think you have uh, an AP with you. Yes, I do. I have, here's one with an integrated antenna. This is the Ruckus R550. This one's a pretty small form factor, but everything's all in one unit with the LEDs and I've got some ethernet ports in the back, even a USB port. I have another one here also uh, that's, you know, the same. This one is, uh, actually, I don't know if you guys will see this, but this one is same thing. It's a little bit uh, bigger. This one is from Action Tech um, and same thing. It has integrated antenna. You can kind of see the profile. Uh, and this one is a Wi-Fi 6E, I believe, AP. Uh, so it has, you know, three radios. And you can see they have Ethernet port as well here, as well as the USB port. Uh, so these these APs are like the most common form factor you'll see out there. Um, and Your, what Yours kind of yeah. had a heat sink on the back too. So kind of yeah. a way to dissipate any heat coming from within the AP. I don't think, yeah, mine kind of has that also the, the ruckus, these, these little grooves here that you see. Yes. And usually for the AP, like, I mean, the material, it's either like plastic or, uh, on the front. Sometimes you have some heat sink in middle at the back. Um, and then I wanted to talk about the inputs as well. Um, and maybe, you know, the one thing that's very important when choosing APs, maybe we'll go back to this, but it's it's how do you power the AP? Yes. Um, most of the time we power the AP using the Ethernet cable, so it's PoE uh, mm-hmm. powered. Um, but sometimes you're going to have the options to actually, yeah, like you, you have on yours, well, you have the, uh, the, the option to connect like a DC input. Uh, so you can also power the AP using, you know, like a, a typical uh, power. Uh, outlet yeah yeah something to consider for your upgrades when you are buying a bunch of APs you look at that you got to power each of those APs via PoE through the Ethernet port so that means you got to have enough ports on the switch and enough PoE budget yes and we'll go back to this when we'll talk about the 
kind of the the evolution or the trend of evolution of the AP will go back to power because nowadays with six gigahertz, that's really something you guys have to to keep in mind. Yeah. Um, and and I don't know if it's important for a lot of people, but some or I guess almost all APs now have a USB port for mm -hmm. some sort of extensibility. Maybe you can connect something else, uh, some sort of. I don't know, cellular yeah. antenna. I don't know what else people use the USB port for. Yeah, the USB could be used for, you know, different things. You can, like you said, you can use it to power another device. I've used people use it to connect like maybe an IoT gateway or, you know, other type of antennas, maybe a, a ultra wideband antenna uh, or something that's not, you know, directly supported by the AP itself or some of those... Um, you know, in retail, you have the electronic uh, shelf labeling. Uh, sometimes, you know, you could connect the system via USB um, and leverage the AP to kind of power all of these devices. Um, but you could also connect the LED strip, you know, if you want to be fancy. Oh, yeah. and, put, and it, can... put it around the AP. <laughs> <laughs> put it around the AP. <laughs> <laughs> why, why don't we talk a little bit about the antennas that are inside, the integrated antennas in, the, in these APs? Because... They, yeah. they are known to be omnidirectional AP. So does that mean it's really going to come out from everywhere on this access point? Yeah, most of the time, these uh, these access points, they are designed to be installed under the ceiling. So the antenna is omni. So on the horizontal plane, it's going to cover, you know, it's going to give you pretty much like close to a circle of coverage. Um, but on the vertical plane, uh, you'll see that they'll try to send more of the energy downwards. So it's more more of a down tilt omni than in a, a full like sphere. Um, so that's why you know the you usually get better performance installing the APs facing down under the ceiling. Yeah. And that's why if you install it on the wall, then you may get a little bit more yes. vertical bleed through between right. your, your your floors. Yeah, so we we yeah. I don't like installing it this way, only because now what happens to the coverage on this side? So yes, ideally yeah. we'll, we we want to do it like this on the ceiling, right? Downwards yes. towards the users. Oops. Now, now if you need more uh, flexibility, uh, we now have. Uh, more and more, we see that more and more with six, six gigahertz, but we have access points with directional antennas built inside the the AP itself. So we don't need to connect any external uh, antennas. Everything is built into the AP. And that gives us a little bit more flexibility when it comes to, you know, uh, sending the energy where we want it. Um, so, you know, back in the days we, we, we used to have it uh, a little bit with, um, you know, some companies, um, uh, if I try to remember, I think Ruckus, uh, used to do that or, um, maybe I've used them with Cisco outdoor Cisco APs where outdoor um, Cisco APs. I've had to, had to mount an AP on the side of the building, but we were concerned about some of the bleed that might come into the building. So we had one with integrated uh, directional antennas, and it, we, we were able to shape it to a courtyard where there were a lot of people. Yeah, so these, these options are becoming uh, more and more popular. Uh, first reason is because in 6 gigahertz, we have some regulations, or some countries have some pretty strict regulations when it comes to external antennas uh, using low-power indoor APs. Uh, and also because... You know, everyone realized that it's uh, it's more convenient for everyone, for the installers, for the designers, uh, maybe for the manufacturers. Um, so yeah, maybe we're seeing even, these maybe even more uh, cheaper, affordable on yeah. the budget for some people because now you don't have two components that you have to buy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's it's like a win 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 situation. And then, so I have an example here that I want to show you. This one is a Cisco AP, it's the 9166D1. And uh, and it's, you know, if you compare this one to its uh, omnidirectional typical model, it's almost the same size. Uh, we did a previous episode on it where we compared, you guys can check it out. It's almost the same size, but actually inside this AP, we do have directional um Antenna, this one is 60 degrees by 60 degrees. And so that helps you to kind of focus a little bit of the signal where 
where you want it without having to worry about external antennas. We'll be right back to the episode. Do you need a tool that offers seamless Wi-Fi analysis and troubleshooting? Look no further to Wi-Fi Scanner for Windows. It's a versatile three-in-one tool. Discover Wi-Fi access points with ease, assess speed and performance accurately, and conduct detailed active and passive Wi-Fi surveys seamlessly. It works perfectly with the internal card of your Windows device. The Wi-Fi Scanner Copilot feature is ready to troubleshoot common issues related to connectivity, performance, security, and configurations. Broaden your reach by analyzing remote networks with Optify and WLANPI integration. Dive into beacon information or delve deeper by opening wireless PCAP files. Visit wifiscanner.com and download a free trial today. Yeah. Yes. So, so, so now that you have the APs, right, um, there are different ways you can connect an AP to your network and how you can manage it. So depending on your AP model or the way it's architected, there are different ways that you manage it. So the one that we are all used to doing uh, was the controller method. You actually have a separate piece of hardware that does all the control plane management of your APs. Uh, that is how I started in Wi-Fi. I dealt with multiple different controllers, small to, to large size. What do you think about those, Francois? Yeah, so... You know, I, I, when we look at AP data sheets, we always see a lot of features and, you know, uh, things that the AP can do. But at its core functionality, the AP is there to handle the wireless communications. So it's a layer two device and they, they are there to make sure that, you know, it, it, it sends and receives Wi-Fi frames to and from the client devices and then it bridges these Wi-Fi frames back to the wired network. So that's like the the job, the initial job of an access point. And then how it bridges that data back into the wired network, uh, you know, can vary. Like you said, uh, we could have a centralized uh, controller where all of the traffic gets tunneled back from the Wi-Fi access point to the controller. And then the controller handles all of the, you know, routing and, and VLANs and all of this. Uh, or... Uh, you could have it in a more distributed way where the access point will just uh, drop all of the traffic on the switch level of the switch port, and then the traffic gets assigned to different VLANs uh, at the at the switch port level. Um, and then the, the question becomes, okay, how do you manage all of these APs? Because you may have like hundreds or th thousands of APs. And so today we have, you know, I think two ways of doing it. You either have a controller or you go to the controller and then you configure your APs from there. The controller, you know, you configure it once and the controller just dispatch all of the configs to all of your APs. Or it's a cloud managed solution, which is, you know, what we try to see. We 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 start to see more and more on the on the market is cloud managed solutions where you have an instance in the cloud that will be there to do all of the configuration, monitoring. Uh, alerting and then uh, it will talk to the access points uh, directly and it will configure the access points directly which is a little bit more scalable yeah. uh, because in an environment uh, where you have a lot of APs you may need multiple controllers so now you have you need an instance to manage multiple controllers so you're adding one layer of management uh, the cloud just you know remove this all of this and you just have the cloud uh, managing all of your access points. Yeah, the controller is pretty much a way uh, of being the smarts for the Wi-Fi network. The AP, uh, I, I used to just call them dumb APs because they didn't function mm -hmm. without a controller. And so they got all their configuration from the controller. They would send information back to the controller and that controller would make all its decisions for the APs. On the uh, APs that connect to the cloud, much more streamlined for deployment. So it was easier to just... Uh, have the installer take the box, connect them. Once they get to the internet, they grab, pull the configuration from the cloud. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, it just depends on the architecture that you want or need or whatever yeah. your requirements are for the environment. Um, and, and you just have your options. And most vendors have all these different options. They all have different types of licensing as well, uh, depending on what you want to go for. There is a third one, which I don't think not, there's not that many 
organizations that use it, but you can put an AP in standalone mode where the AP itself is going to be the one that manages everything for the Wi-Fi. And a lot of times it's just for that single AP, not really going to manage a ton of APs, although they're, you know, we can get kind of complicated with all the different ways uh, why APs can yeah. be managed. But a long time ago, APs were managed one by one and you would set all the configuration on the AP directly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and the reason why... Today. Yeah, you could still do this. It's more the way they do it today is more moving the controller code on an AP and it'd be like, okay, that AP becomes the controller. Um, but the, the reason why we're we talking about... AP on a stick also. Yeah, for AP on a stick, that's what we do. You're right. Because uh, we're not connected to the network. <laughs> um, but I was going to say the reason why we talk about this is because uh, it's important to understand how your AP is set up within the network, especially when uh, something goes uh, south and you need to troubleshoot, okay, why is my, not, why is my AP not showing up uh, in my management tool? Uh, then it's very, you know, if you know how it works, if you know what the AP does uh, when, it, when it starts, if you know what the AP needs to get connected to your controller or the cloud, then you can troubleshoot that process. You know, you need to know, you usually you know need to make sure that you know the AP is powered uh, properly. Make sure that you know they receive the proper speeds. Make sure they receive a, an IP address in the right subnet. Make sure they can reach the controller or the cloud. And you can go through these different steps to troubleshoot why an AP is not uh, showing up. Because you know if if you start doing Wi-Fi a little bit, I'm sure this will this will happen to you. The AP is not showing up. <laughs> uh, problem. Yeah. And I think the last thing we want to mention is when you're ordering APs, make sure you really look at the SKU because some vendors have a lot of different SKUs for the same AP model, especially when it comes to country code. So you want to be able to purchase the right AP for your country or else it's not going to work properly when you either join it to your controller or to the cloud. You won't have the right uh, transmit power or uh, basically set to the wrong regulation if you purchase a country code a different ap with a country code that's not for your country yeah that's a good very good point uh and also there's uh we didn't talk about access points that supports external antennas right oh that's right we skipped that one yeah we skipped that one <laughs> so we can go back to it and i have one here this is this ap is from uh mist and you can see it just looks normal but if i tilt it you'll see that i have some connectors and so these, this is like the third form format of APs you're going to find on the market. And these ones allows you to uh, connect uh, an external antenna. And so that gives you the flexibility to use different type of antennas uh, with different uh, beam width and uh, angle of propagations based on what you want to do. And so you're going to connect an external antenna to these APs. Yeah, I don't even know how we forgot about that because that is my favorite way of of using APs is APs with external antennas, just because the, the, the functionality you get with an antenna is like this antenna here, this, this one's a little bit more appealing instead of an AP on the ceiling, you could actually flush, not flush, um, on the top. So it'll look like that kind of blends in and then they have the leads, right? So depending on the AP and the connectors, there's different types of connectors. Um, and, and mm -hmm. we'll have an episode where we talk about antennas and the different kinds. But that's why I like external antennas is be, be, uh, because of the flexibility you have and how you shape the signal, especially in areas where like uh, warehouse aisles, maybe you don't want to use the omnidirectional because of how the signal propagation is and how high the APs are going to be. And so that's where external antennas can help uh, the, how you want to cover an area and and there's so many different types of antennas maybe it's more for aesthetics they have a lot of antennas that are built for aesthetics mm -hmm. yeah so these aps are as they are as well and then um and so it, it, that, that gives you the the flexibility uh in terms of functionality they it's it's usually pretty much the same functionalities it just allows you to connect uh, the antenna you want for additional OR flexibility. Um, yeah, and the, the, the one 
last thing I guess uh, I wanted to mention as well is that the, over the years, the form factor of the AP has evolved a little bit. And what we see today, because of the fact that we are having more and more radio in the access points, we now mm -hmm. have a 2.4, 5 gigahertz, 6 gigahertz radio. Sometimes we have an extra radio for scanning. Sometimes we have IoT radios. Um, so the, the access points, Bluetooth, yeah. Uh, so don't be surprised if you find that the access point size is growing. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's one of the reason. And they also become more powerful, right? They need yes. more power uh, to run properly. Um, and also, uh, they also need more PoE power to operate yeah. fully. So also don't be surprised if you start to see that access points nowadays, they require more power. Uh, that's, that's the reason why. And that's going to impact, you know, your switches as well. Uh, because now you may need to upgrade your switches to make sure you're powering your APs properly. So uh, that's a trend that you'll you'll see. Uh, the access point is becoming more powerful. It can do more, and therefore it will become bigger and then require more power. Yeah, and APs will get bigger also based on how many actual Wi-Fi radios it has. Right, you've got two by two uh, radios, and they tend to be smaller. But once you go to four by four or larger that's where the size pretty much almost, I don't know, a third of the size bigger, but like this is a two by two AP. So you can see how it, it's about the size of my head. But if you look at, I don't know, Francois, you I have, have the, a, yeah, larger, I have the four by, I have the four by four equivalent. Yeah. See how yeah. much bigger that is. Yeah. But yeah, that's, that's our uh, episode on an overview of Wi-Fi access points, the hardware, uh, describing the different types of components within the access point, uh, the ones that take external antennas, talking about the evolution there at the last part of AP sizes and POE requirements and how that's getting all crazy and, and how they work, how they connect to your network. Uh, if you have any other questions, feel free to leave a comment over in our show notes. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can leave a comment down below. Which one's your favorite? You like going with the omnidirectional, the built-in directional, integrated directional antenna, or do you like using external antennas like me? Let us know in the comments below. But we want to thank you guys for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thank you, guys. Need a Wi-Fi scanner and survey tool that won't kill your budget? Try Wi-Fi Scanner for Windows. It's an all-in-one tool to explore Wi-Fi access points, test speed, and perform active and passive surveys. Built by Wi-Fi engineers for Wi-Fi engineers. Visit wifiscanner.com to start your free trial today.